In today's video, I talk about my first week using a 16-8 fasting approach. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and I wanted to do a video today following up on the topic of fasting because I've been doing it for one week now. And I was first introduced to this idea years ago, um, you know, when it became kind of trendy. I remember the fasting twins and some of those guys started getting into it. But at the same time that that was becoming trendy, I was also paying very close attention to the research associated with um, spiking your muscle protein synthesis as many times per day as possible. And so that was something that I was more interested in at that point in my life. But as you get older, you get interested in trying new things. And I think, um, you know, the fasting approach was something that I had started doing last, about two years ago, when my calories got low during a cut. And I found that I just preferred to eat less frequently but larger meals and when you do that and your calories are getting low you start to have some pretty large windows uh, between when you eat and that's what would happen so recently my goal was to test this out and to be honest if we're being completely 50 50 I'm I'm kind of anti fasting not um, for any particular reason, but I just think that my mindset for so long has been to eat every four or five hours to get the maximal benefit for training and progress and all, you know, those things that I'm having to kind of disconnect and make sure that I'm being completely objective, as objective as possible. You know, we all go into every situation with our own set of biases and I'm, I'm, I'm certainly no different in that regard. So I wanted to discuss the first week and what I thought. So let's explain what I'm doing in case you didn't watch my last video on, um, on the fasting approach and what my goals are and then maybe you guys can um, give me some feedback. So what I'm doing is a fasting approach called 16-8, right? So basically I'm choosing an eight hour window during the day to get all of my calories and the other 16 hours a day I'm fasting. So my eating window starts at 11 a.m. and ends at 7 p.m., okay? And for one week, I've been able to do that. What was really nice was for the holidays, those were the hours that we ate. I was still able to enjoy Christmas Eve dinner, Christmas Day dinner, um, you know, the, the breakfast. I just waited a little longer. You know, you know we had a lot of things to eat for, um, for family in town, but I just got up and had my coffee no stress, no mess. And then when it was 11 o'clock, I had my first meal. So what's been the biggest change for me? Well, the first meal of the day I usually eat is around 8 or 9 a.m. So not a huge shift there. You know, you're pushing it back a little bit. And what I'm doing is I'm having my coffee immediately when I wake up. I get up, I have my coffee. I actually like this. This makes me feel good because I used to feel pressure when I woke up, like I gotta eat right away. I need that first meal of the day. And when you remove that restriction, you remove that feeling, you realize, wow, it's not that important. You know, the old adage that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Well, I'm, that may not be true, especially uh, for some people that don't actually eat their first meal of the day. So I think breakfast may not be the most important meal of the day, assuming that all your other things are in place, okay? So let's talk about the other part of the day. So 7 p.m. is my cutoff which works well because with my wife and my son, we sit down and have a very nice dinner every night at six o'clock. So we sit down, we have a big meal at six o'clock. The one thing that I've noticed myself doing is going, all right, it's 645, I need to get some calories in. And I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but the problem I'm having right now is getting all of my calories in in that eight hour window. For those that are using a fasting approach to try to get themselves into um, really drastic weight loss or something like this, that is not my goal. My goal is to keep all the muscle I have because I plan to compete in bodybuilding in the year 2018. So I can't afford to just have one meal a day or two meals a day. I still need to get in 240 grams of protein in an eight hour window, which has been a bit of a challenge. But surprisingly, not as hard as I thought it would be. And here's what I think is happening. 
So when I have my last meal at seven, typically my wife and I will have a bedtime snack. So my son will go to bed, we'll go get some popcorn or some ice cream and have a snack. I've just eliminated that. No big deal, right? Um, I still spend the same amount of time with my wife, but I just don't have the snack, maybe she does. Um, she's also 20 weeks pregnant, so I'm not going to tell her not to eat, right? So grow that baby. But for myself, easy peasy, cut it out. And at first, I think the first couple days, it was a little difficult because it was more of a ritual, a habit that we had. But now that I'm not doing it anymore, no big deal. So the next meal that I would typically eat on my daily schedule would be around 11 o'clock midnight. And that might sound strange, but for those that don't know what I do, I'm an online coach and I spend a lot of my day um, creating programs, nutrition programs, training programs, talking to clients, and I find that the hours between uh, 10 p.m. and 1 a.m. to be the most productive. I can kind of just zone out, get on my work, and nothing is bothering me, okay? So typically that, that hunger would kick in around 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and I would have another meal to keep me going for another hour or two. Well, I've eliminated that, and I'll be honest, the first couple days, it was a bit of a bear. You know, the, the ghrelin would spike. I could, I could feel the hunger coming on, so what I did was I just kept a lot of water near my desk, and I would just make sure I was drinking some water. And um, I still get hungry, like last night, you know, I've been on this week, I still get hungry around that time, but, um, you know, 16, 20 ounces of water, and I'm able to just cruise through that until the meal in the AM. So I feel like I'm making progress in regards to being able to not feel incredibly hungry at the times of day that I'm fasting. So what have I liked so far? Well, the one thing I've liked so far is typically when I eat a large meal, so when I'm eating four or five meals a day, they're still pretty large. Sometimes when I get to that next meal that I know I'm supposed to eat, I'm not hungry, I'm not starving, but I'm eating because I feel like I should be eating and to get my calories in that, that I need for the day. So what I like about this is at 11 a.m. when I eat, I just ate my first meal of the day, I feel incredibly hungry right now. Within an hour, I feel completely digested and ready to eat another meal. So what that tells me is my body is digesting very well. I feel very hungry. Um, throughout that eight hour window, I never get the feeling that I am completely stuffed. Okay, maybe a good thing, that may be a bad thing. But as far as digestion, I really like it because I don't like eating when I'm feeling full. The other thing that I've liked is I go to the gym because I feel like I'm digesting so well. I go to the gym feeling very good. I go to the gym, you know, some people have suggested that I train fasted. I'm never going to probably train fasted unless it's just a necessity. But I feel going to the gym like there's nothing in me. I feel like I am fresh, ready to go. And the workouts have been high quality. No change to the quality of the workouts. In fact, um, I've had some great workouts in the last week. So. My concerns about training and recovery, so far, no issues there. Um, so that has been a positive. The only negative that I've seen so far has been my association with, okay, I need to start cramming food in, in this eight hour window to hit my calories. And so I don't wanna get into the mindset of like overeating, um, but as I get leaner and lighter and I require less calories, it's probably gonna be less of an issue. I think at this point of fat loss, my calories are just high enough that it's it's still difficult for me to get all my calories in. So I feel like I have to like rush a little bit. Maybe you guys can chime in on that. I'd love to hear your thoughts. So yeah, that's my approach right now. I'm really enjoying it more than I thought I would. You know, I think um, I'm looking forward to seeing how the next three weeks go because in the next three weeks, I have some pretty big things going on. Going out to the LA Fit Expo, going down to San Diego to see Brett Contreras and Soki Lee, and uh, probably see Corey Probst and, and, and Luke as well. Um, and so like it's going to be, I think, a nice segue into February, March, going to the Arnold. I think it'll be interesting kind of using these parameters, traveling, and um, you know, I really like the mindset of knowing after 7 p.m., I don't think about food again until 11 a.m. Sometimes, you know, as I've talked about in the other videos, my work can get disrupted by my eating patterns. And, you know, my friend, Dr. Dominic Diagostino, um, who practices a ketogenic approach, he eats twice a day. And that was the, the greatest benefit he told me was that, you know, when he's in the lab for 12, 14 hours, he doesn't have to go eat every three or four hours to spike his, his glucose, to spike his 
um, blood sugar to have energy to keep going. He really likes the bookend meals because it allows him to work all day without getting hungry. And you know, if you're familiar with Maslow's hierarchy of needs, if you're not meeting your basic needs, your body's gonna let you know. If you're hungry, it's gonna take you out of that ability to really produce at a high level because you need to eat and feel like you're in a good place nutrition-wise. Um, your body is going to let you know that. So, so far what, what I've liked about that is I just kind of unplug my mind from food. I'm able to be a little bit more productive and during that eight hour window is when I'm the most active. So I'm eating when I'm the most active. I'm walking after some of my meals. I'm definitely training. And um, yeah, so that's what I've liked so far. So after one week on fasting, my weight is still around 222. So there hasn't been a huge shift in weight after one week. But we also had the holidays in there and I definitely didn't track on uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas. And um, I made it a point to enjoy some treats. But I really like how my body composition is looking. I feel lean, I wake up looking very kind of tight and um, that's a good thing for me. You know, I know my body pretty well and I'm, I'm happy with how it's looking and feeling. I'm predicting over the next week that we're gonna see a nice drop on the scale and some improvement. And the next video I do, I will do another physique update. So we'll keep doing them, the scale and the physique. We'll do some videos and pictures. So thank you guys for watching. That's my approach to the 16-8 fast. And I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.